Welcome back to Let's Make a Game, the channel where we are making a computer role-playing game using the free program Twine and the Sugarcube format for Twine. I have added a new playable race to the game. These guys, who in my notes are, are called trolls, but actually in the game there's never any text that specifies what the names of the different races are. And I think that you could um, quite legitimately interpret this picture as being of a, um, a troll, which is what I uh, called them, but also I think possibly an orc or an ogre. And I want to spend um, this video talking about some of the decisions that I made um, when creating this race because in some games, um, perhaps particularly sort of fantasy games where you have different, um, different races, each of the races might have some sort of special power or advantage. Um, and that um, can be a problem to go that way because every time you add a new race you have to sort of program a new a new ability in but it does have the advantage that if you do that and if the powers are sufficiently different every race is pretty much guaranteed to be unique they will have at least that one that one thing about them that's different um, but what I've done is the uh, different races are distinguished only by the range of scores that they can have for each attribute so humans um, have an intelligence of between five and fifteen, whereas other um, other races can be can be higher or lower, um, and that means that um, I can add new races without having to do much new programming. I just really need a new picture and a new um, a new set of numbers. But it also means that I have to be careful not to introduce a new race that's pretty much the same as the others. Um, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be much fun in the long run to have uh, a race that looked interesting and was an interesting idea, but it turned out uh, its scores are pretty much going to be the same as uh, an elf or something. Um, so the reason that I chose um, trolls is that nobody, um, none of the three races that existed before definitely have a high... Uh, score for size. Dwarves definitely have a small score for size, of course. Uh, the elves can have a small size, but can ha can have a quite high size because I'm thinking of elves as being both sort of fairies, but like little Victorian fairies, but also uh, including the elves uh, in uh, in the sense of Tolkien, sort of tall, grave elder race I suppose um, and so they have a range of size that goes up to fairly high um, and humans are always average to fairly, fairly high but there wasn't anyone that always has a, um, a high score and so okay I thought well what would a, what would a big race be and um, naturally I thought of trolls um, the actual business of uh, programming it and getting the getting the picture and so on was quite simple really I'll, I'll go through it but um, it was all just doing things that I've covered in previous videos um, to get the artwork I went to mage.space which is what we're looking at now I don't want to hear your announcement go away um, and I went uh, sunset head and shoulders portrait troll by N.C. Wyeth, um, an artist that I quite admire, who is um, who is deceased, and so I don't feel bad about sort of using their style. Um, I would feel bad if it was a living artist, I, I think. Um, and I had to um, try a few times because even though I said head and shoulders, um, it didn't always, as is the way with AI art, it won't always give you. Um, exactly what you ask for. It'll sort of 
it was always definitely a troll and it always definitely was at sunset and it was always definitely in the style of N.C. Wyeth, but um, for some reason um, it, it seemed to have trouble with head and shoulders portraits. But um, I just kept clicking and uh, eventually I got um, this guy here, um, which I think embodies what I think of as a I mean, I had a fairly vague idea, but, you know, big lumpy sort of monstrous looking human was basically what I was after. Um, yeah, as you can see, even though I've specified head and shoulders, that is definitely not a head and shoulders portrait. But anyway. Um, I got there in the end. I mean, it's still pretty good. <laughs> they've definitely got the sunset, and they've definitely, I think, they've got the NCY um, um, style pretty good. And uh, interestingly, they, they've they even picked up that, that there should be a signature in the bottom right-hand corner. I can't see if that signature is like a real thing, but um, it's interesting that it's apparently capable of sort of having a little artist signature. Um, yeah, anyway, so I got, I got that picture and then I, um, rounded off the corners in a way that I've, um, uh, talked about in my previous, uh, the last video before this one and, uh, shrunk it because, um, the picture that you get from that side is way too big, um, to use, um, here. And then I, sh uh, did an even smaller version, um, for this The one that appears in the in the sidebar, um, and I'll just briefly cover the um, the method of um, entering the numbers. Um, but it is quite simple. Um, I'll zoom in. It's just uh, first of all, I had to change the variable uh, R, Rn, which is the number of races. Um, so instead of being three, there, there are now four. And then I went and had a look at these arrays, um, having worked out what I think the range of abilities for a troll should be. Um, and again, that was easy because the system automatically lowers or raises um, every character's attributes so that the total is the same, other than size, because size um, isn't necessarily an advantage to have a high score. But the other, the other scores, if you end up with high numbers, it'll lower it, and low numbers, it'll raise it. So I didn't have to worry about balance. I didn't have to worry about um, having ranges where the average of those ranges um, is close to some specific number, as long as it was possible to have a character with the right number of um, attributes, the system will sort of deal with it automatically. Um, so then all I had to do was enter um, the minimum values, that's what MI is, MI stands for minimum, and then the maximum values over here, um, and the order of these is taken from this array. So the first slot is STR or strength, and then intelligence, dexterity, constitution, charisma, willpower, and finally size. And and that was it. Um, I didn't have to sort of I didn't have to really program anything else. It was really just a matter of adding another line to um, to some arrays, and and that is the advantage of defining different races by um, by different ranges of attributes. Um, you don't have to, I mean, I'm not saying that's what you should do in your game, um, but it's, I'm, I'm happy with my choice just because it doesn't mean, now I don't have to come up with, um, you know, some more programming to cover the troll doing their special troll power or whatever it is that distinguishes the troll if I was, if I was going that route. Um, of course, the um, the disadvantage is what if I really want to have a race that is defined by a power, like what if I want to have a race that's defined by its ability to breathe fire or something? 
Um, but you know, there are always trade-offs, and, and I've you know, this is what I've chosen. Um, so hopefully, some of that will be of interest to you in your in your own project. The main lesson I think that I would say is that if you are going the way that I'm going, where um, different races are distinguished by different attributes, um, you need to make sure that your new race is doing something new, um, that it that it that it is um, has some high or low score or some combination of high and low scores that another um, another race isn't going to have, um, because it isn't going to be very fun. Um, having two things that are the same. For example, I thought of having uh, a fawn or satyr race, but then when I thought about what attributes they'd have, it seemed very similar to um, to what elves have, and so I sort of decided against it. Um, I also noticed <clears throat> when I was looking at um, these ranges, there wasn't, <clears throat> there isn't a race that always has high intelligence. So um, I want to think about that. Maybe, um, maybe it wouldn't be a race. Maybe I'll split humans up and have, you know, scholar and merchant and barbarian or some sort of um, some sort of division like that. But anyway, as I say, the main the main lesson I would say is um, to make sure that your make sure that a new race does something new and it isn't just there to be new, you know, because you want it to have a new, because you want it to have another race. Make sure that it's, make sure that it's sort of um, giving the players another interesting option. Um, so I hope that was of use or interest to at least some of you, and I hope you will tune in next time.